Science and pajamas. Boop. All right, you guys. So today we're going to talk about Newton's first law of motion. Now, very simply put, an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. Now we can take that and expand it out. Like we can say an object at rest will stay at rest. An object at motion will stay in motion unless it is, sorry, let me rephrase that. We have an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion with constant velocity I forgot the constant velocity part last time unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force. So that's what Newton's first law of motion says. An object at rest will stay at rest. An object in motion will stay at motion, meaning it'll keep moving in the same direction at the same velocity unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force. So. Here we have my little fuzzy ball. It is at rest. It will not just spontaneously get up and, you know, start bouncing or flying or anything on its own. It is at rest. The only way it will no longer be at rest is if some force acts on it. The force of my hand threw it and it's change from being at rest to being in motion. Now the part you couldn't see is that it kept going in motion until it hit the bookshelf, at which case it fell, hit the floor, and then was back at rest again. And this is the same thing as well with even objects in motion. So let's say we have a ball that's rolling down a hallway. So here's the road or the hallway, the ground. Here's the ball. It's rolling and it's heading that direction. According to Newton's first law, as long as nothing prevents it, it will keep rolling forever. It will keep going in the same direction and it will keep going with the same speed, the same velocity. <sighs> now I know some of you out there is like, um, no, eventually it'll slow down and stop. But yeah, the reason why it does that is because there's an unbalanced force acting on it. Friction, friction between the ball and the surface. The friction between them will actually cause the ball to slow down and eventually stop because of the frictional force. But if there is no frictional force, which would, in this case, that's our unbalanced force, if there is no unbalanced force like friction, it will keep going forever in the same direction, in the same speed, until once again, it hits something, in which case now it's experiencing another unbalanced force. That's why like in space or in the movies about space, if someone lets, a tool go when they're out fixing the a satellite or a shuttle you just kind of see it um, start floating away in a straight line at a constant speed and that's why because in space there's not really any friction there's no air resistance there's no 
um, friction between a surface because well, we are kind of just suspended in nothingness. So with the lack of an external force and specifically an external unbalanced force, there is nothing to stop the object from moving in the same direction with the same constant velocity. Now maybe eventually it'll get caught in the gravity of a planet, in which case now an unbalanced force is acting on it. And that unbalanced force is the gravity of the planet and now it's going to start pulling it down. But this is what Newton's first law tells us. And we can also think of this as the law of inertia. law of inertia and what inertia is it's the tendency of an object to not want to change what it's doing so it's the tendency to resist acceleration Let's see you know you cannot see that their muscles up. So right now, that marker does not want to move. It is fine staying where it's at. It is happy there. It doesn't want to change its position. It's at rest. So what this is telling me is that, and what inertia is, it's the tendency of this marker to not want to change what it's doing. It is at rest. It does not want to stay at rest. That's why it's just going to stay there until something comes along and boop. Um, have you ever seen magicians or other people do the trick where they pull the tablecloth out from underneath? the plate settings. So when you have a tablecloth like that, you have the tablecloth, there's the legs of the table, and then you have like maybe there's a vase with some flowers in it, got some plates, and what happens is the Magician will hold on to the tablecloth and he usually says like Alakazam, whatever. And what happens is you ha you're left with the table. And all this stuff is still on it. Now they've probably shifted a little bit because there was some friction between them and the tablecloth. But if the magician does it properly, he's able to pull it off without dragging those with it. And the reason for that is because of inertia. When you are in a car, we also experience this, but it's that tendency of an object to not want to change what it's doing. These objects were at rest. The magician pulled the tablecloth with a force, and since these objects did not want to change being at rest because of their inertia, they stayed there. Now, if you pull slowly, you're going to drag them with you. But if you pull it fast enough, then you can show that the force enacted on the tablecloth may not have as much effect on the stuff on top of the tablecloth. You also experience this whenever you're in a car. So let's say you are sitting in a car. Let's see, so room, room. And make it a convertible. And here you are. Let's see, there's your seat. Look at you all happy. 
Now what happens is you should hopefully be having your seatbelt on. Let's say you're just kind of sitting there and your friend who's driving just hits the gas, hits it so, super hard. What happens? Well, with that massive and sudden acceleration, you actually get thrown back into your seat. It's not so much that you're being thrown back into your seat, it's that you are at rest and your inertia tries to keep you at rest. But the car is experiencing a forward thrust and so the car is essentially pushing you forward. So you're not so much feeling you falling into the seat, you're feeling the seat push into you. So the car's trying to move forward very quickly your body is trying to stay at rest, which is why you kind of get that jerk and you feel like, you know, you're falling into the seat and you're just kind of flashing the gas stick. On the other hand, what happens if your friend is driving and like, oh man, there's a stoplight. I should probably stop. So they just vroom, slam on the brakes. What happens to you at that point? Well, at that point, if they just slam on the brakes, again, it's a sudden massive acceleration. So what tends to happen is you kind of fall. It feels like you're falling forward. And that's because your body is still in motion. And the inertia of it wants it to stay in motion. But the car is experiencing a force in the opposite direction. So it's slowing down. Your body's trying to keep going at the same velocity forward. But because of the seatbelt, it doesn't allow you to, which is why it pushes into you. So we do experience this every day. Um, let's see. So going back to something we were talking about with forces, if there is no net force, so if you're at a constant velocity, then it means that you will stay in whichever state you're in. So whether it's at rest or in motion. That's why, again, when your friend hits the accelerator, um, hits the gas pedal, for the beginning of it, you do feel like you're, you know, being smushed against the seat. But then it starts to normalize. Your body gets used to the motion. And now you don't feel that acceleration anymore. You don't feel like you're being forced back into the chair. It's because you have, your body has adapted to being in motion and now is, has the inertia of wanting to stay in motion. So you're going, you're driving at a constant velocity, same direction, same speed, and you just kind of feel normal. That's why after a while, it kind of doesn't really feel like you're traveling fast anymore because you've normalized to it. I mean, when you're being thrown backwards, yeah, it feels like you're going super fast. But when you've gone the same velocity, it doesn't feel like you're going fast anymore. And that's simply because now you are, you have balanced forces. So there's no net force, doesn't mean there's no forces. It means that the forces around you are balancing out. So the frictional force and thrust are balancing out. The normal force and the gravitational force, they're balancing out. So you have no net force. So you're have no acceleration. It doesn't mean you're not in motion. It doesn't mean you don't have any forces acting on you. It just means that the forces are balanced and you are not changing your motion. All right, let's see. Checking my notes, make sure I c cover everything that I want to. All right, that looks good. All right, so then until next time when we do Newton's second law of motion. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.